The concept of free will has been a subject of debate and conversation for well, a very long time now. Person personally, it has been one of my favorite, I guess, yeah, conversations to have, right? Especially with religious people, considering that the concept of free will really only arises in people of faith due to the fact that, well, there's picture two circles, for example. One circle inside the other. The smaller circle inside is free will, and the outer circle is considered God's will. This is something I heard when I was in fifth grade by my Catholic teacher, and has been engraved in my head ever since as my, I guess, interest in theology expanded ever since. Now, while I mentioned theology, the concept and ideas of free will are not strictly limited to theology. In fact, they're more, I guess, philosophical, dealing with purpose and meaning. So today, I'm here to tackle whether or not free will is even real, I guess. If, you know, if one certain belief system, spoiler, it's Christianity. If this certain belief system is real, then do we actually have free will? Because in my last days of being a Christian, <clears throat> before I became an atheist, it has been one of my, I guess, personal struggles that has been going on in my, in my mind for quite a while. And while I've consulted with a lot of people I would consider experts on such matters, none of them were able to give me, I guess, conclusive or satisfactory answers that would allow me to sleep at night. Now there are many varying different ideas of free will, but I'll give you the, I guess, the general one among this Christian Christianity. Now the reason why I only tackle Christianity is one, I'm an ex-Christian, two, majority of people are Christians, at least I assume anyway, and three, because it is actually something worth talking about if you want to study, say, the Bible for example. The basic idea is that we were all created by one, you know, all-powerful, all-understanding, all-benevolent, all-loving God. He gave us freedom, freedom of choice, freedom of understanding, freedom of belief, that sort of thing. You know, normal human rights. We have the freedom to choose if we believe in God, we have the freedom to choose what we do with our life, how we spend our life, and we have the freedom to basically do whatever we want, whether it's good or bad. And I won't tackle good or bad because that's a, a subject for another video, but that's the basic point. And now to make it a little more interesting, let me introduce you to the Judas Paradox, which, you know, it has the name Judas in it, so I guess there's no need for introduction for the one and only Judas of the Bible. Yes, Judas is Iscariot is, is his actual name. Now, if you didn't know the story for some reason, basically Jesus had 12 disciples, one of them betrayed him, sold him out to his political, <coughs> sorry, not political, to his enemies. And of course, Christ was executed, but the plot twist, Christ dying was actually God's plan all along, and Christ's death would serve as a ransom for all souls of all time. I, I won't get into detail of the morals there, but that's the story. And since the beginning of Christianity, or in fact in all of its lifetime, Judas Iscariot has been, I guess, damned for all time, as, as the song goes. And although the gospel writers have, I guess, varying reasons, none, may, still many today question the motives of Judas' betrayal for Christ. And while there have been many explanations, some more satisfactory than others, it's still a mystery to all of us. I mean, granted, none of this could have probably happened, but it's still a question. But the question of free will arises when you analyze Judas' actions and the supposed plan of God for humanity. So, here's the question. If all of this, Passion Week, Good Friday and all that, if that was all planned out by some supposed all-benevolent, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-understanding God, is it right for him, or for any of us even, to condemn Judas for doing what he wanted to happen? Granted, the Bible doesn't explicitly say what happened to Judas after his death, and there's even some contradictions on what happened to him after the arrest. Did he hang himself? Did he buy the field with the money and die later? What happened there? But anyway, that's for a different uh, video, I guess. Now, some people would say, no, Judas isn't guilty because, well, God wanted this to happen, right? Uh, Jesus saved Judas technically from his death. 
from I guess burning in flames he saved him from that that's his piece part of the deal but then I I would question now in the gospel of Luke and the gospel of John in those two gospels there's a slight detail or I guess it's not slight but there's a detail about how Satan was involved in all of this how Satan entered Judas that's that's the phrasing that's how it goes apparently either he was possessed or Satan just took control of him or he listened to Satan whatever the interpretation is Satan had a part in, to do with this now another question arises from this which is why was Satan helping God why was Satan helping God further God's plan I mean aren't the two of them against one another okay let me explain so Satan basically God's adversary Christ Christianity's adversary everyone's adversary at this point if it's God's plan for Jesus to die so everyone would be saved that's opposite of what Satan wants because apparently they're on opposite sides but anyway the point is why would Satan help God further his plan I mean wouldn't that just spell damnation for Satan I don't know I mean this is all technically fictional for me so I guess there's no point getting worked out but you know it, it's still an interesting question to raise now let's go back to Judas the motives behind this betrayal are largely unknown I say unknown but then we have gospel readings so let's go one by one Mark and Matthew are more explicit with the motive being greed Luke and John specify Satan yeah no doubt this act of greed has led to some I guess anti-semitic ideas about Jews and money grubbing as shown in that one movie <coughs> Passion of the Christ there are those who speculate that Judas may have expected Christ to be well like what anyone else would expect of the Jewish Messiah at the time someone who would overthrow the Romans and usher the messianic era some would also argue that Judas betrayed Christ to force a rebellion to force Christ to use his God-given powers to do something about the big bad Romans while another one which is probably my favorite which well I mean actually there's another, there's another one too but my, my, my one, one of my favorites is that Judas saw Christ as someone who would eventually get them all killed someone who is too dangerous so similar to Caiaphas let one man die for all the people this is best illustrated in Jesus Christ superstar as f as for what Judas's motives are another one and this is one of my favorite as well Christ told Judas to betray him to hand him over to the Romans or I guess to his enemies this is shown in the last temptation of Christ and in the infamous Gnostic gospel the gospel of Judas now the last one is personally my favorite because it resolves a lot of questions about free will at least in the Judas paradox if you were me could you betray your master That's why God gave me the easier job, to be crucified. As for Judas's death, well, the Gospel of Matthew says he hung himself while the Book of Acts says he lived longer to buy the plot of land himself and died later, in a gross manner. Now, another argument about free will, similar to the Judas paradox, is what's the point of prayers what's the point of asking god for anything right i mean look at jesus's prayer himself he says if your will be done let this cup pass from me if you want it then let this happen if god doesn't want it it's not happening so with that being said if it's happening regardless if you ask for it or not what's the point what is the point of prayers what is the point of asking for anything really and if everything is predetermined if everything is already laid down if time is linear what's the point in anything what's the point in doing anything if everything god wants is just downright inevitable then that means god wanted satan to rebel god wanted all of this to happen god wanted evil to spread across all the world god wanted christ to die god wanted animal sacrifices god wanted all the suffering in the world is that how it is well that's a view held by some but I've spoken to a couple of Christians who have actually gave gave given me a different view God is all-powerful all-benevolent and all good but that doesn't mean everything he wanted 
has happened it's just that he knows what's going to happen although with that being said if that's the case why hasn't he done anything about it right if he sees all the suffering in the world and he can do something about it then him not doing anything about it makes him complicit to the suffering right hmm most Christians accept that time is linear due to the fact that there was a beginning in the world and eventually there will be an end so in that linear time is everything just predetermined is everything that's gonna happen inevitable what's the point then so that leads me back to Judas did Judas have a choice on whether he wanted to betray Christ or not or was Satan entering into him and being the I guess scapegoat and reason for all of this just predetermined would Christ have died I mean I'm asking you Christians would Christ have died if it weren't for Judas if that's this if that's the case shouldn't we look at Judas as a hero then a guy who was forced out of his will to save the world to help further the plot if it's all real